welcome back from a kind of unexpected and certainly unadvertised break. Apologies, we had a big grand travel excursion to Norwich where I gave a lecture on virtual hydrohegemony, and then we had visitors in the rooms of requirement, so we were otherwise occupied. However, Ramblings is, you know, still put putting along with concepts as they come up. And last week, yes, last week, well, it's like two weeks ago now, I guess, sorry, uh, in my human rights class, we stumbled upon a very exciting, interesting topic, which is rather different um, in the UK than in the US as far as constitutions and governance goes. So today, we're going to talk about the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty. <clears throat> parliamentary sovereignty. It is what it sounds like. The parliament is sovereign. Um, what this means is that in the UK and in in some other um, form, or, you know, some other states, the current parliament legislative body has all the oomph. They've all they've got all the power. Like what they say goes. Period. End of story. Basically, and um, the UK does not have a written constitution. However, there are certainly principles and doctrines of law that, you know, are regarded as strongly as the U.S. Constitution would be as far as like, you know, this is the backbone of how uh, governance and legislation and legal issues work. And the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty is is up there. It is, some people would certainly argue the backbone, kind of the, the biggest part of the U.K. constitutional system, actually, um, is that parliament is supreme and what they say goes. So, why this came up in our human rights class um, it is around questions of Bill of Rights. Um, in the U.S., we have the first ten amendments known as the Bill of Rights, you know, with, you know, freedom of expression, blah, 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 right? This idea of, you know, here are the rights that individuals have with their government, period, end of story. Like, you can't pass laws that go against these rights. Uh, the government can't do things that go against these rights, these kind of things. So they're a big way, and one of the main ways that the Supreme Court would challenge, uh, you know, anything that um, the Senate or House of Representatives pass, right? If it's illegal according to the Constitution, and particularly the Bill of Rights is a big place to challenge that. For the UK, should the UK have a Bill of Rights? Well, sure, because rights are important, right? And, you know, the UK has signed on to the year to, you know, several conventions at the UN level, and then certainly with the European Union, um, it has human rights obligations and is bound by certain things. So, in the UK, there is a Human Rights Act, um, which could be considered a Bill of Rights, more or less. However, you also have this thing of parliamentary sovereignty. And because parliamentary sovereignty is so important, it's not just that what say, parliament says goes, but it's what the current parliament says goes. So parliament can say anything, but they cannot bind a future parliament to anything, right? So parliament of 2013 cannot pass a law that requires the parliament of 2014 to do X, Y, Z. Because parliament is supreme in the moment that it exists, it is the ultimate authority, right? So there is no possibility of the Bill of Rights in the same way the U.S. does, uh, because the U.K., you know, can't, you know, yeah, so the Parliament of today can't say, you know, dear Parliament, in, you know, 20 years, you can't do anything that infringes the right to life. So there's this fun workaround compromise going on um, where... If a law is passed that is seen as um, contradicting the Human Rights Act, um, courts and judges will make a statement of incompatibility. Um, and, you know, that sets in chain some mechanisms for Parliament to figure out what's going on. So there's this beautiful little legal political balance of how to keep this doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty in place, which is incredibly important for UK political history um, as far as, you know, people's rights against the monarchy, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's not going to go out the window anytime soon um, while still being able to comply with international and, you know, domestic human rights obligations. Anyway, so I just found this principle of parliamentary sovereignty interesting and intriguing because we don't really have the same kind of thing in the U.S. Um, so there you go. There's your little bit on U.K. politics for the day.